we all want to build something every now and then on the Roblox. We have the ability to, but sometimes we just can't get the detail that we want. And that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do in videos that I make. So I'm going to do an in-depth explanation of all the tools we have available here because you can do quite a bit with these basic tools and they are the overall fundamentals to being able to build. Of course, the most basic and important one being the select tool. But first, what we want to do is make sure we add a part into our game. I want to show you guys how to do this first and foremost and what you have to do when you first add a part. Now, depending on what you have in your material and color, you can change this. It will change what is output onto your part. So right now I have grass and a blue color selected, so it gave me blue grass. Now, when you first put a part into your game, it'll be unanchored. You want to make sure this is anchored so your builds do not do this. They will just fall over and they can cause lag, especially when you have many parts that are unanchored, which is not good. That could potentially crash your studio and uh, you could lose all of your work. So the first and most basic tool out of the tools we are available to use is the select tool. You can hover over your part. And all you have to do is click to select it. The next tool is the move tool. This will allow you to move your part on the X, Y, and Z axis. This being the Y, this being the Z, this being the X. Same thing with the scale tool, except this time it actually changes the physical size of your part. You can make things overall size larger, their overall height and thinness, stuff like this. The next tool is the rotate tool. This will allow you to spin your part in multiple directions. The same ones, of course, being the X, Y, and Z axis. The last tool, of which I don't really use that much, is the transform tool. And this essentially combines everything into one big tool. You have the scale on multiple axis at the same time. In, the, in this case, it seems like the Z and X axis. You can scale the Y alone. You can scale the X and Z alone, of course. And you can also rotate at the same time. And it, it tells you how many degrees you're changing it by. Um, you can move it up and down. And they also give you a grid see how many studs you're moving and how many studs it, the part covers. There's also a indicator on how many studs your part is sized. So that's essentially it for the basics and now I want to get into what follows using these tools. The most basic things that follow are things like copy paste, cut, and duplicate. So when you have one part you usually want to have multiple parts to work with so you can create one whole group or object. You do this by either pressing Ctrl C to copy the part to your clipboard and then pressing Ctrl V to paste it back onto your base plate or in your game. And then you can work with it from there with the four tools or five if you like transform. You can also do a more simple method of duplicating it, which is accessible by Ctrl D. Control D will duplicate it in the same position as the other part and will copy it pretty much directly, but you will have to move it away so they are not intersecting like this. Last but not least, we have cut. Press Control X to cut and this will automatically apply it to your clipboard, sort of like as a memorization function so you don't lose it. And you can press Control V again to bring it back. For an example, let's say I do Control X on this part, I move this, I can still press Control V and it'll copy that part only. Since it memorizes the last one that I was using or the last one that I cut. The last most basic things I want to get into are grouping, anchoring, materials and colors, and maybe even surfaces. So right away I'm going to go ahead and copy paste this part. And then we're going to play around with its material and color. If you have this selected, you know, you make sure it's selected by hovering and clicking on the part. You go to the material and you can change it to wood, you can change it to corroded metal, to any option in this list. Make sure you click the drop down 
or else you won't be able to access that. Same thing with the color. You can change the color by clicking this color box and changing it to whatever color you want. You can also do some more advanced things, but this only works with the material plastic. You can add surface to them. These used to be used back in the old Roblox days. I don't really know if they're used that much now, but some people use them for design purposes such as this or in their games. You've probably seen this before the universal look. Um, but once you change the material to something else, they disappear. They won't be on your brick anymore because it just isn't compatible. The next thing, as I sort of discussed earlier when I imported a part, is the anchor ability. You want to keep your parts anchored and whenever you load in a new part it'll always be unanchored so make sure you anchor your parts for grouping for example let's duplicate this part Control d and then select both of the parts by pressing shift and click you can do this by clicking select and then shift click again and you can select both parts and if you want you can use the keyboard shortcut of Control g to group your object or you can go to group up here and click group and it'll group it the same. Now, as I mentioned earlier, with groups and the select tool, you can select parts inside of groups. Now, you can press alt and you can select individual parts, or you can also press alt shift and select multiple parts inside of the group. Just selecting it will not work, or you can also go to the explorer and select them in the explorer. You can press shift and select multiple in the explorer as well. You do this by selecting one part up top and depending on how many parts you want to select, press shift, click on the bottom part and it'll sec select everything in between. Same thing for groups and everything else. If you want to select everything here, you can press shift. It works the same way. You select what you want first, whether it be inside of a group or outside of it and click the last object in the Explorer and it'll select everything in there. For some odd reason though, if you group it, control G, you cannot do it after you just group it. You can't press Alt Shift, you can't press Alt and you select it, you have to deselect it first and then do your Alt clicking, whatever. One more important thing to know is about your undo and redo keys. So let's say I didn't mean to group this, these parts. I can press Control Z and it'll undo that group. It'll undo any action you do unless you do an action after you undo it and it'll never redo after you do another action. So for the sake of example, we'll do redo and it'll redo the group. And then let's say I go back here and I move the part. It removes the action of redoing because now it won't remember what I've done in the future and I've changed the ability for it to redo what I had uh, just undone. The last most important thing to me is collisions because sometimes this can get turned on accidentally I don't know if they automatically turn it on in studio anymore but they used to when I was younger so make sure you don't have collisions on because this will happen unless you have your incre increments correct and you know what you're doing and everything's fitting together correctly in your build I will get into that right now too when I speak of increments I'm talking about these up here in the model top model tab these apply to all of your tools Rotate will change the increment at which your rotating happens. So it could be 10 degrees, 15 degrees, 25 degrees, anything like that. Changing the move increment, let's say you want one stud. Maybe you want five studs. Maybe you even want 100 studs and you want to make something massive. It will change how much you move something by, you scale it, or you select it. So let's say I have 20 studs on my move. It'll move my object by 20 studs, as I am telling it to do. Usually I like to keep it to a minimum so you have easier workability and things fit together. And make sure they all add up to one whole number so it's it can't be something like 0.3726 because you'll get a whole bunch of... Uh, overlapping things or they just won't work together and you'll have gaps and stuff like this so i personally like to do 0.25 or you can do something like 0 0.1 0 0.125 you know things that are divisible by uh whole numbers and you know for the basics that pretty much wraps it up 
There are a lot more other things that I'd definitely like to get into, but this is pretty much just for beginners and like almost absolute beginners, never touched studio before. I thought that'd be a good idea for my first video. Um, I hope it went pretty well. I hope I wasn't rambling on for too long or something like that. I'd appreciate it if people in the comments for whoever's watching told me what they'd like to see or maybe how I could improve for the future. So that'd be awesome. I enjoyed making this first video. I hope you did as well. So if you did enjoy it, make sure to consider dropping a like and subscribing. It really helped me and I'd really appreciate it, especially for my first video. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Uh, I don't know what that'll be on yet, but it'll probably be more beginner things or more about the studio UI and interface itself, the software, stuff like this. So. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.